Large-scale LEGO vehicles have always been to me those brilliant pieces of LEGO engineering that always bring something new to the table, while providing to be great building experiences at somewhat affordable prices. The new Land Rover Defender isn't any of that. Buckle up, because this is going to be a bumpy ride. Uh, I mean review. As far as iconic vehicles go, the Land Rover Defender 90 is at the top of many lists if you take away most of the vehicles previously done by LEGO and therefore an obvious choice to continue the Icons vehicle sub-theme. The sand green color scheme makes this one stand out against other LEGO vehicles and it comes stacked for off-roading trips. There's this roof rack that wraps around the Land Rover with two pairs of work lights. At the top there's a yellow jack, two jerry cans that I placed next to a minifigure for you guys to have a sense of scale, and an opening toolbox, which is quite the clever build, and there's two string elements included in the set which you can use to rope everything up there. To the sides of the roof rack there's traction plates to take the Land Rover out of muddy situations, a fire extinguisher in the back, the engine snorkel and four tools spread out everywhere, a hammer, a shovel, a pickaxe and an axe. In the front there's the off-road front bumper with a working winch and two spare tires. This is the Land Rover Expedition model in all its glory and it looks really cool in my opinion, but for a cleaner look you can remove all of the extras and make some adjustments in the build for the standard Land Rover version. You'll need to remove these pieces on the hood, revealing a few studs for you to place this build if you want the bulge version A, but the instructions also have steps for us to build the sleek version B that looks like this. The off-road bumper is replaced with a license plate and the roof rack also goes away quite easily. The connection points for it get replaced with these fairly recent slopes. We also remove these side bumpers and this gives us a better look at the Land Rover body lying underneath of all of those layers of extras. The front grille and lights look good and there's even this 1x2 tile with the Land Rover logo. There's also stickers in the set though with two of them right above the grille for the word Defender. The hood opens and stays in place with the prop rod to reveal the 5 cylinder turbo diesel engine for rough terrain performance. It can be removed and swapped with the V8 engine for standard travel. The doors open revealing a dark tan colored finish, on the inside a few details and Land Rover being British is made clear with the right hand drive. Now you might have noticed some gears inside the hood and that's because the vehicle actually has steering. No hand of god steering options here like the Ghostbusters Ecto-1, more realistic for sure but harder to play. There's a lot of slack to it so you gotta turn the steering wheel a bunch before something starts happening to the wheels. Above them a brand new mudguard element in sand green which the set has 4 of. The windscreen element isn't new but is somewhat rare since it was only used once before in the T2 camper van model and has stickers on these sides. Inside the sticker on the rear view mirror looks a lot like a reference to the LEGO campus office building in Billen, Denmark and moving back a little we get to see the extra seating spots. As expected the back door opens and closes. Second license plate to the left, another Land Rover 1x2 tile this time around in sand green, and lastly the towing each ball. It isn't over, the set also offers full suspension, which I believe it's a first on these types of sets. This was achieved with the use of four red suspension elements. It works relatively well but ends up revealing a few problems with the model. I've had the mudguard elements of the front wheels falling off a few times and I'm definitely sure I placed them correctly. Another issue is that by pressing the top of the Land Rover these wedge slopes end up coming off, which should not happen. These transparent bits here are supposed to be see-through windows but they were overly engineered and the final result isn't good in my opinion. You can't really see through to the inside unless you go really low on the angle. LEGO should have made these slopes in transparent instead, it would have made the internal build a lot more simple with a better result in my opinion. But that's not all. I gotta talk about the building experience. The 18 plus vehicles have always been my go-to LEGO sets for awesome building experiences and techniques at a somewhat affordable price, with the Ford Mustang, the Porsche 911 and last year's DeLorean being some of my favorites. The Land Rover however is a plain and simple build. Nothing out of the ordinary and no crazy building techniques. On one hand, really good for new people getting into the hobby, but not good for LEGO fans looking for the next big challenge. 
building the set itself was annoying. Not boring due to repetitive building steps, but annoying to handle the model, which is something I don't often complain about. For the most part of the build, pressing pieces down on the sides of the main body made the whole thing fall. And even with some red support pieces underneath that later on need to be removed to make the fire extinguisher didn't help a whole lot. Then picking the model to turn it from one side to another made it unbalanced because these link elements, placed at a very early stage of the build, would always get caught up underneath, making me having to adjust them countless times throughout the build, until bag 11, almost at the end of the set, when they're finally attached to the wheelbase. It may sound like nitpicking, but the fact is, when designing and building LEGO sets, it is always recommended to start with a big plate or a flat base of sorts, to avoid these kinds of issues. I should know, right? And finally the price. At little over 2,300 pieces, this set will cost $240, which is a bit much in my opinion, in line with the summer price increases from last year, which still doesn't make it okay. If you choose to display it in the standard way, there's all of these leftover elements that will have no use to you, and maybe $20 to $30 could have been saved there though having the option to have both regular version or the expedition version on display offers some value to consumers. So here's the pros and cons of this set. I really like the look of it, the color choice was great, great display value, customization options, working steering and suspension. The cons however, with design fails, annoying building experience, stickers and price, slightly outweighs the pros, in my opinion of course. There's definitely better vehicles you can buy at the moment from LEGO. But if you have them all already and are looking for the next item in your collection, are a massive fan of Land Rover or know someone who is, this set may be the one you're looking for.